This episode, I will be discussing a number 12 Western Electric combination magneto slash common battery local switchboard. This has a 10 strip of magneto drops in it. Then above the magneto drops, the jacks above the lamps is 20 lines of common battery. Here is the rear of the jack strips. And below are the relays and common equipment for the number 12 switchboard. The number 12 switchboard is a significant piece of my collection. For my 100th YouTube video, I will be producing a video titled A Hundred Year Phone Call. The Hundred Year Phone Call will be a telephone manufactured about 1900, connected to a magneto switchboard, which is a Western Electric Model 1800, and I will show that uh, later in this video. That magneto switchboard will have a trunk to the number 12 switchboard that we're looking at. The number 12 will have a trunk connected to my 3CL toll board, and I will show that as well. In addition to a dial trunk from the number 12 to a step-by-step -step exchange. My 3CL board has trunks to a step-by-step -step machine, a crossbar switching machine, and to a asterisk server via a channel bank so I can complete calls through the PSTN to a modern iPhone. So the 100-year phone call will be stepped through the different vintages of technology. None of the technology is, has been modified. The Magneto phone will be as it was when it left the factory. The switchboards are all built as they left the factory. The trunk to the Astra system is an analog trunk to a channel bank and then T1 into a modern PC with uh, an Astra uh, platform. From there, it will go VOIP out to the network and then um, into the cellular network or I can also call landline phones. In addition to that I could call back in to my own equipment via the Astris system. I would demonstrate various types of calls and if I can get around to getting my payphone that's the right vintage for this switchboard uh, finished. I will also have a coin phone connected to this board. The 100 year phone call would take several people, uh, as in operators. We may do double duty and have uh, one operator play in two or three different positions, depending on how many people I can. Uh, have come out and participate into this. This is something that can be done by two other organizations that I'm aware of, but has not yet been done. This will be the first switchboard that the 1900s or earlier Magneto phone will be connected to. Then from this switchboard, there's a trunk to the number 12 board and I also have a trunk from this switchboard directly to my 3CL. 
However, this telephone switchboard was manufactured in the teens and it would have never had a direct trunk to a toll switchboard such as the number 3 or 3CL due to the time period. However, it is very likely that this switchboard could have had a trunk to a number 11 board, excuse me, a number 12 switchboard, which is a magneto or common battery. And I do have some Bell system documentation that shows how some of this stuff would have actually been done in its day. A 3CL toll switchboard. The number 12 will have a trunk between it and this switchboard as soon as I build them and it'll operate as it would have in its original day. The number 12 board was a 1930s to 1950s approximately generation. The 3CL, this particular one, was manufactured in 1957 and then the trunks to it are original and a few of them I've had to hand build. I generally don't get involved with the trials and tribulations of making some of this technology work because I don't know if there's much of an interest in the process of restoring some of this equipment as well as wiring it up. I have wired up 10 of the magneto strips and I will wire up about 30 of the common battery strips. I will make provisions for four trunks However, I will at this point only equip it with two. In the time period that this switchboard would have been in service, they would have had a few trunks to other towns, but not that many. The Model 1800 Magneto board that I showed earlier may have only had one single trunk between it and the rest of the world. And I will have two between it and the rest of the world. Considering this is a museum and I'm doing this for demonstration purposes only, two will be very adequate. Some of the issues I've had to work through are the switchboard cords, the switchboard tip, ring, and sleeve of the plug has been very oxidized and corroded with garbage, so much so that it cannot be inserted into any of the jacks on the switchboard. It's like trying to push high grit sandpaper into another piece of uh, sandpaper. So I've got to replace the cords for two reasons. The spades on the back, which is we're looking at the rear of the switchboard internal, the conductors are all rotten. The plastic that's covering the plastic insulation is dried out, cracking, and or missing, exposing bare copper conductors. This would create shorts as well as a lot of noise. So I've replaced a group of the cords and I have the word out to get more cords and I have had a few sent to me so we're making progress. I've replaced some of these cords, uh, the reds and the grays, but not the greens. So now I can plug these into some of the jacks on the switchboard. The tips of these cords are so bad that if I take a voltmeter and try to ohm through between here and the spade on the back, I cannot get any continuity. It's perfectly 100% insulated, so that means this cord would not work at all, in addition to the conductors being dried out and cracked. So those are being replaced. The lamps here are the ring off lights. So if one of the cords is connected to a magneto phone and the party on the magneto phone hangs up, 
they ring the line to notify the operator that the call has ended and will light up these lights only when a magneto phone is either is hanging up. The lights down here in the key shelf is for the common battery. So you can have one cord connected to a magneto phone line and one cord connected to a common battery line. And the common battery line light will be the one that lights, but the other one will not. And that would have been normal. If both cords are connected to common batteries or a trunk, then both lights would light up when both parties hung up. Or at least one would light up when one party hung up. Here is a close-up of one of the common battery strips. The way this works is you have a light bulb that is in series with the telephone. So one side of this lamp is connected to the central office 48 volt power supply. The other side of the lamp goes through a normally make contact in the jack, then out to the telephone, and then it comes back from the phone through another normally made contact to ground. So when the subscriber goes off hook, the current will flow through the lamp, through the telephone, and alert the operator that there is a need to originate a call. In cases where the phone was way out from the central office switchboard, they would add a line relay so that the power to the phone would be going through the line relay and the line relay would then light the light on the switchboard. If you get too far away from the central office, uh, the light would never light on the switchboard or would be very, very dim. Some of these switchboards had various voltages of lamps to try to make it to where the brightness of the lamp would be kind of the same between the lines. So you could have 24 volt lamps, 36 volt lamps, or 48 volt lamps, depending on the length of the cable pair. One of the other issues when dealing with wire this old is it's very brittle. It's badly faded. So unless I strip the gray jacket off of the cable pairs, lots of the wires are fairly close to the same color which means I have to actually buzz them out with a toner, and that's a real pain, but it has to be done. One of the challenges I've had is the brass screws on these terminals have been tightened down and left in that position for 30, 40, 50 years without being undone, and when I go to turn the screw to loosen it up to remove the spade, the heads are breaking off which then I have to work out the broken part of the screw to replace it. That's been a real pain due to access issues. My 100-year phone call should be completed, I'm hoping, by the end of December or 1st of January 2022. For those who are subscribed, you will receive a notification. And for those who would like to help contribute to my electric bill and internet service, I have created a Patreon link as well. Thank you.